hoping we talk about some finance tonight. So um, this time of year is when uh, the district submits what's called an L2, which is our paperwork to the county in order to um, request our levy funds officially. And so the county compiles all those L2s from the taxing districts and they take those and create tax bills um, coming out in November, December. So um, at this time, we have a pretty good idea as far as what the market rate that the levy rates will be set on. There still is some possibility of adjustment to that overall market rate on the county's end, but we know on our side how much we're going to levy as a school district. So um, we can get an idea of what the tax rate will be. And then I also like to look at some scenarios when I can, just especially this year with those higher assessed values going out. I know that caused a lot of panic throughout the community. Um, and hopefully this will, um, you know, you can take this and hopefully be able to explain to any neighbors or friends that are concerned about those assessed values and how it impacts their tax bills because it's not um, necessarily the, you know, the increase in your assessed value does not necessarily mean that your taxes will increase that much. So I'll get a little bit more detail about that side. But basically, um, the district, we levy our fundamental, also known as supplemental levy, of 4.955 million. We levy for our bond payments, which are bonds that were previously passed, and um, we have to make those payments for the term of the bond. So we're paying on the 2015 bond and the 2019 bond at this time. So we, um, and then there's a smaller line item for Idaho code we can levy for um, helping to pay for liability insurance. So those are the three items that taxpayers will see on their bill um, this, this fall. And the one thing to keep in mind, so um, you'll all find out if you haven't already, I'm the queen of disclaimers. So here's my two disclaimers I'll give you. First of all, we're talking about post-fall school district taxes. We are not talking about the overall tax bill. There are a number of taxing entities on um, our county property tax bills, a city, a highway district, all sorts of different entities. We're not talking about those. I'm not an expert on their taxes. So we're talking about the levies that the school district, um, the levy rate for school district taxes. And then um, the other disclaimer is that, again, this is still a projection, so if you know the tax rate is off a couple cents, then you know that I gave you the disclaimer that it's still a projection based on those values. Okay, so we're looking at quite a, you know, a grid of numbers here, so I'm gonna walk you through this. Um, typically, I like to show a number of assessed values because um, you know, there's a wide range of assessed values out there. I did kind of narrow into some of the more average assessed values, and I wanted to take an actual house in our district and show what um, will happen to their taxes as far as with this projected levy rate and what their assessed value went up. So this house um, in our district last year was valued at uh, $394,490. And then um, you have your homeowner's exemption because this um, home is a residence. So 125,000 is subtracted from that assessed value to get um, this taxable value of 269,490. So that is what the rate is applied to in order to come up with the tax charge for the school district. So this is the tax charge for the year. Um, so you know if you're paying with your um, escrow every month through your mortgage, it's going to you know be I think what is that 31 something a month, but. Um, the interesting thing here is that this taxpayer, as with probably every taxpayer or every homeowner in the area, um, saw, well, okay, so let me back up. That was their tax charge. They saw an assessed value increase of almost 49%. So um, that I think is, you know, not a surprise to anybody in this room if you receive one of those notices this year. So the good news is that because our tax rate has dropped, their, um, even with that higher assessed value, their tax bill would come in at that $391.64. So it's not you know, a perfect even, you know, it's a few, you know, under $20 more per, per the whole year. But um, the, the good news is if your assessed value increased at the same rate as the average of the market, you're likely to see a flat tax charge for the school district's taxes. So just the school district's taxes, 
Um, there's some different rules for other taxing agencies, like they can um, have some percentage increases because most of their budget comes from property taxes, but for the school district, should remain relatively flat unless you had some sort of anomaly for your assessed value increase, like an addition or um, yeah, maybe your neighborhood was um, had a lot more high high sales or something like that. So, very quick um, overview. You can all um, I'll give you the two hour presentation maybe at the next board meeting. So, yeah, any questions? Has there been any movement from the county treasurer on the delinquent uh, penalties debacle? Last I heard is um, that the affected taxing agencies were all um, frustrated with the, the decision that was made and that um, we're you know, working with council to ensure that it is legal first of all and um, yeah, hopefully we'll be able to recover that um, the penalty and interest income isn't a huge line item for the school district's budget because um, we do receive proportionately less property taxes compared to other um, agencies like a city but um, you know it's still money lost for students that is staying with the county so thank you now 12.0 special report